What's going on everybody? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and welcome to the first video in the series of how to start a lo-fi track. Now I say how to start a lo-fi track, but the reality of it is in this series, I'm gonna be making a short lo-fi track from start to finish because lo-fi is not a super complicated genre and it is not a long genre either. If you go and find lo-fi playlists on YouTube or Spotify, you will find that the average length of a lo-fi track is maybe around two minutes. You get really short ones, which are very simple, and there are some longer ones as well that have a little more structure, but the average is around two minutes, so that's what I'm going to go for in this series. Also, I apologize, my voice is a little bit raspy in this episode, so if you could just bear with me, that'd be great. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about two things, structure and the drum. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start off showing a couple of pictures that I put together to kind of show you the basic structure of a lo-fi track. Now this little elongated trapezoid that I have here is an example of the layout of a basic lo-fi track. Basically what this is, is this gray bar down here is time. So this is the entire track length. And this red bar is the progression of the song in energy level. So basically the higher the bar is, that's how high the energy is. Now obviously lo-fi is not meant to be high energy at all. So if like right here were a dubstep drop, like down here would be lo-fi. You know what I'm saying? But I just zoomed in and made it a little more obvious. Basically for basic lo-fi, you just start out with a little intro and you know it's fading in, you have sounds fading in, you have more layers coming in. And eventually it gets to the main part where everything is layered together. Together. It's the main groove, the main part of the song, and that extends for the majority of the song. And then it either like fades out or you would cut out the drums or other things, and then everything would slowly kind of dwindle down into the end of the track. These are more common in the shorter lo fi tracks, you know, ones that are between a minute, a minute 30, maybe even up to two minutes, you can have a length like this. If you're doing something longer, then you do have to have a little bit more structure. Like uh, for example, I'm doing the two minute, so I'm going to add a little bit more structure and do something a little more like this. What this means is that I have the things fading in like normal and you know, more instruments are added and I eventually get to the main groove that goes on and carries on for a little while. And then it goes down slightly. Maybe I might go a little lower than this, but I'm probably gonna take out the drums, add maybe some vocals in there, just a little breakdown. And then it's gonna go right back into the main bit again, but I want it to be slightly more energy. Like I'm gonna add slightly more layers, maybe edit a few things, just like fill it out a little bit more and have that go on for a while and then the track will fade out just to have a little more ups and downs, you know, a little more things going on, keep it interesting. Now, I'm sorry, I know that part was boring, but now we can get into the actual production of it, starting with the drums. And of course, for the drums, why would I not use Ghost Hack's Lo-Fi Hip Hop Pack? So to start off, let's just find a kick that we like. That one's kind of nice. I like that one. See if I can't find one that's a little more subtle. I can work with that. All right, so I have a little kick pattern here. And I can go ahead and route this into a channel. And we can call this kick, and it already has an EQ. I kind of like it with the high end down. And a little bit of the low raise just to give it a little more muffled thump. And now, of course, we need a snare. That one's actually pretty cool. These are kind of nice. I think I'm gonna go with that one. Sounds lo-fi to me, let's give this snare a channel. So I added a little bit of EQing to this. Just to take out weird lows and kind of accent some parts that I liked and the frequencies. And then I added a touch of reverb. Actually a lot of reverb, the wet's all the way up. I just turned it on side so it's only reverbing the side. Now this kick and snare pattern is all well and good. However, there is something I definitely wanna change. With lo-fi, it's kind of a mix of like hip hop and smooth jazz. And especially with smooth jazz, you tend to have a little bit of kind of swing, almost laziness to things. It's not quite on beat, it's a little bit 
kind of lazy and pumping, which this right here is not at all. This is static and perfectly on beat. What I kind of want to do, I want to take this kick, this kick, and this kick and kind of delay them a little bit. So if we just kind of scoot them over a bit, maybe like that. Or perhaps a little bit more, maybe we could just go like that. I actually like how that sounds a lot. Actually, what I decide to do here on these uh, kind of lazy kicks is to uh, make them unique, which I can just do by right clicking and hitting um, make unique right here. And then I went in and changed the de-clicking mode to smooth bleeding, which as you can see, adds these little crossfades. And if I just bring this, you know, from here back down to about here, then I can give it a little fade out. So this kick ends before the snare hits. So it goes like that to give it a little more like liveliness and the kick doesn't sound so stagnant. Also, I did decide to scoot this guy over a little bit. I didn't like it when it was perfectly on uh, the four there. Next up, let me grab a hi-hat. A lot of these are really good. I can use that one. So let me shorten it a little bit. I can get rid of a little bit of that vinyl tail. I like the vinyl tail there. However, I think I'm going to add my vinyl kind of sound effects myself. And I turn it down a little bit, obviously. But we can go ahead and throw this in its own mixer track. And I think what I'm going to do is just bring up this low pass filter and high pass filter. About there, so the hi-hat doesn't have too much high-end. This is lo-fi, so we have to make sure not to make it too high frequency. So now we can lay this down uh, every beat. Actually, what I'm going to do is, again, this is straight 4-4, just like right on tempo. Lo-fi isn't really like that. So I'm going to take uh, these guys, and I'm going to scoot them over a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, that'd be fine. Just scoot it a bit. Yeah, I like that kind of lazy feeling. After that, I kind of want to add this little wood click. Except to just add it to like here in the track, just like right here in between. So I can turn this down a little bit and just like have it in the background. And obviously it gets its own mixer track right here. I'm just call that wood. And next up, I'm going to grab this shaker and just throw it in there and create a little shaker loop. All right, so I took out all the low end from my little shaker loop I have going here, and I took out a lot of the really high frequencies too. Just leaving those kind of high mid frequencies, and I brought them out a little bit. But I made this shaker loop by taking just a straight shaker every uh, beat, but I reversed one. I made it unique and kind of did a reverse here, so it's almost a reverse shaker effect. There are shaker loops in the lo-fi pack, which sound pretty good to me. Except they don't quite have the swing that I wanted, so I figured I'd just make my own since they include the samples. And once I extended it a little bit longer, we have our basic lo-fi beat. Lastly, I just want to do a couple of different things to the master. The first thing I want to do is put on an isotope vinyl to make it sound, you know, more like a vinyl record. That's very good for lo-fi. I want to add a little bit of compression, whether that be with, you know, Maximus or even maybe like Sound Goodizer or something, you know, just like a little bit. And then I'm probably going to look at the EQ and see if there's anything that needs to be taken out. Okay, so I threw an isotope vinyl on the master and this is what it sounds like. It's not quite as strong. It sounds a little more contained, a little more, you know, vinyl-esque because I have uh, the year here on 2000 and I turned the RPM to 33. By the way, if you don't have Isotope Vinyl, it's free. If you go uh, to the Isotope website, you can download it as one of the free plugins. It's really an awesome plugin for lo-fi because you can get really good vinyl textures out of it. I turned the wear up a little bit to like 13% and I also turned the warp depth up to like 15. I usually turn it around 15 because I feel like it's a good area where you can kind of tell that it's warping a little bit. You can't really tell with the drums. It's more for melodic content, but I usually keep it at around 15 or something like that because it's just a little bit of warping here and there to give it kind of a retro vibe. And I turned the input gain and stuff down just to make sure that it didn't clip. 
After that, I decided that it was good to just straight up use a sound goodizer. I only wanted a little bit. I just wanted a tad bit of like, you know, saturation. It's, it's really more limiting at this point. Like I wanted to compress the peaks just slightly, but that's just a taste. And after that, I threw on this EQ, which is ducking down the very high end. Again, this is lo-fi, so we don't want anything to have a lot of really high end. And I don't really think I want to sidechain any of these shakers or hi-hats. I could change my mind later, but I'm just going to set up a sidechain for when the melodic content comes in. So what I have, I have here in channel 30, this uh, sidechain, and I have a limiter here. I can, turn, I can turn the ceiling all the way up in the limiter. We don't want any ceiling for this limiter. We don't want it actually limiting. What we want is to automate the gain, which I actually have done here. You can see it moving around. It's not going down all the way because I noticed in, you know, lo-fi, the kick doesn't duck everything down as much as it would in like dubstep because dubstep has a really big, like just a really heavy kick with a ton of frequencies. Lo-fi is not like that. I'm just ducking everything down a little bit to, you know, compensate for the bass. So I just set these little triggers there on the kick drum, not on the small kicks. I don't think they need to be side chain there, just on the full big kicks. So there we go. We have our drums all set up and we are ready for the next episode where we will be getting into the melodic elements. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then look out for the next video in this series coming out soon. Also hit subscribe. And if you're really feeling like a cool person, you can always hit the notification bell, which will send you notifications when we upload new videos like these or just when the next video in this series comes out. So thank you guys for all the support and I will see all of you in the next video. Happy producing.